Hi, it's Julie from the PMFRC. Welcome to this mini fireside chat. Um, we are coming to you one day early because we really want to talk to you about an event that is happening tomorrow uh, that we think would be of interest to a lot of our clients. So we are coming to you one day early with this mini fireside chat to talk, you, talk to you about our Veteran Family Program Forum. Um, I'm here with Claudia Beswick, our Executive Director, who you know, but also Louise Anderson. Louise is our Veteran Family Program Coordinator. Um, Louise, why don't you tell us about the forum, what it is, uh, when it is, and why we're having it. So the forum is tomorrow from one to four, and it is, it's a gathering of people who are medically releasing, who have medically released their families and um, service providers in the area nationally. Well, they're in the area, but they are national service providers. Um, panel one is mostly made up of people who will support the medically releasing CAF members and panel two are people predominantly serving the medically released CAF members, veterans and their families. Now you talk about a group of panelists. I guess when people go through this medically released process, they realize as they go through, there's a lot of people that they have to talk to. There's a lot of pieces that, that come together. And sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming to find the person that you need in VAC or to find the person that you need in the CAFTC or what is a nurse case manager? All these pieces sort of come together. There's a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of things that you have to learn. And it's a bit of a crash course. Um, and I think it's one thing for the member, but it's another thing for the family members as well. What's sort of that, that pause between the family member? Why would a family member benefit from going to this as well? Because they can ask the questions that they need to ask in order to feel better, A, about the um, release process itself, and B, to better support their medically releasing partner. Um, two ears are always better than one. We always suggest that people come um, with their significant others um, to the scans, to any meetings with me, um, and to any information sessions that may involve the medical release process. It's a lot. Um, there's a lot of moving parts. And I think as well-versed as anybody can be, there are still questions to be asked and answered. Um, we've put together, I think, a really great panel. We have CAF Health, Dr. Pepin. Um, I have Nurse Case Manager. I have Manulife. Um, we have the BPSO. We have um, CAF TC. So that's quite a few people, um, you know, so we're covering health, education, um, you know, benefits, things like that for that. And that's for the medically releasing. And on the medically released side of the house, we have VAC, we have CISIP again, we have um, OSIS, I have Soldier On, and the, the Veteran Family Program coordinators, so. Now you said there are two panels. So one is really focused on that pre-release phase and the one on the post-release phase. Can you talk about when those panels are and who would benefit if you're in a pre-release? Does it make sense to stay for the second half and hear the other part as well? Can you talk about how it's gonna be structured? Oh, absolutely. So from one to two, we're going to have um, panel one, which is the pre-release panel. And from quarter after two to four, we're going to have, and those are loose, right? It depends on the conversations. And, and then up to four, we're gonna have the um, post-release panel. And it would benefit, um, definitely benefit people who are releasing now to stay for the post-release because it helps, it helps to have that information because you're going to be there shortly. So you may as well, you know, may as well fill up your info bucket and, um, and ask those questions now you may not remember because of everything going through, but at least you'll have um, an organization in mind that you know where you can go to get some answers. If I have a question and I'm not the kind of person who wants to ask it on that open forum, can I register and send you my question and have you ask it? Absolutely. You could also put it in the chat and we can ask it for you. Perfect. That, it's fine. Yeah, be sometimes I know this is. Um, overused, but you only know what you know. And if if you don't know something um, and somebody says a thing and then it's, it triggers a question and you still don't feel comfortable, just type it in the chat. We're going to have somebody monitoring that. Louise has got quite a group of people who are on the, this panel and she's working with some of the other MFRCs across Canada. Um, 
working with all these partners, bringing all these people together, Claudia, partnerships like these that the PMFRC has formed that other MFRCs have formed really help um, help us to serve our clients better. Can you talk a little bit how that process happens and what those benefits are? Well, like you said, Julie, we want to work strategically and where possible, develop more active partnerships with our community stakeholders, uh, be them on the military side of the house or within the community themselves, but really to increase awareness and understanding of the CAF community, and we can't do it alone. Um, the key to supporting the modern military family is definitely based on many of our relationships and partners that we have. And fundamentally, it's, um, that's how we enhance the services that we can provide. So this forum takes the opportunity to bring a lot of that collaboration together. We know that uh, PMFRC cannot provide every level of service that a family may need. And it's not our job to do that. Uh, our job is to work within the community and to raise awareness about the unique stressors that families are facing. Uh, and a big part of that is, you know, after so many years in the military, moving back into that um, civilian environment. So we don't duplicate any services that already exist. We essentially work with a lot of the local organizations to promote services that are available and connect the families with those partners for that additional level of support. All of our basic community partners are linked and we share many of the same values, um, drawing awareness of all the services that we have collectively. We often say, you, you have heard me say this a hundred times, uh, no door is the wrong door. And we will facilitate that warm handover with families uh, to those resources that we would refer them to. And this is Louise's way of doing that with the VFP forum. And I think the best impact that we've been able to do this year is the fact that we've opened it up regionally and Louise is working with other VFPCs to make this happen. We all know people leaving, the members leaving the forces don't always settle in our location. So the ability to bring this across the region has been wonderful. And for us to be successful, we really need to extend that reach and impact. We have a common goal and that's to support the clients that we serve, our military community and sustaining all of these relationships and partnerships really help explore um, the, the strategies of how we do that and why we do that. Louise, you said it's tomorrow. It is not too late to register. Can you tell folks how they can sign up? So um, you can sign up on our face, our CAF Connection page. It's um, CAFConnection.ca slash Petawawa. We'll put the yes. link in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> I always get mixed up between COM and CA. Um, and yeah, and when you get to our page, there's a banner and we're right there. Click on the little box up there and it brings you right to the registration link. We're gonna bring you right to the page, right to that registration link. Who can benefit from this? You said medical releasing people, you said their families, they said veterans. What if you are um, not in Petawawa, you're in sort of the Kingston area, you're in Trenton, you're somewhere else. Is this information still relevant to you? Absolutely, because it's, um, the people on the panel are, are people who work in national organizations. They're local people, but they represent national organizations. So um, it might not be exactly the same based on where you are, but it's going to be very, very similar. And if you're a service provider that works with veterans or works with this community and you want to find out more about the process, this might be of interest to you. And of course, you're absolutely welcome to join us. Oh, absolutely. Because any question um, that we ask that, that the audience asks, whether or not they're released or releasing, um, can benefit anyway. I'm going to be asking questions. I know that. <laughs> Claudia, events like this really give us the opportunity to hear from clients and get feedback um, about the barriers they're facing, about the services that they need. How does the PMFRC use feedback? Why is that useful to us? Well, communication runs both ways and families sharing information and feedback is really fundamental in our ability to offer a wide um, support network for the families. And feedback is about active listening to our families and clients and taking the time um, to analyze our programs Asking, our, asking ourselves, does this program address the barriers and gaps uh, in the services? It, is it meeting the needs of what the families want? Uh, we want to meet the families where they're at and we're working on ways to stay better connected, much like the upcoming VFP forum tomorrow. Feedback's not about criticism. Um, we really value uh, and believe feedback will help us formalize better decisions that can only improve our programs and services. 
We have several ways that we solicit feedback from families and we do this throughout the year. There isn't any one time that we focus on it. Feedback can come at any point in time and it's used as part of our strategic planning process as well. And that's what helps us set our strategic priorities. Essentially by investing the time to learn about what the um, family and client's experiences are, it's really critical. And this continued feedback is important to, to make sure that we are aligned with the goals and the mandate and how that aligns with the MFS strategic framework, because that's important as an organization who's funded under that. So how can you provide feedback? Well, you can send us a message on Facebook or Messenger. You can use the feedback link that's on our main website page on CAF Connection. Uh, you can call the office. You can send us an email. You also have the option of going directly to one of the program team members or coming directly to me. Uh, if you don't know who to address in the feedback, then I would recommend just pressing that feedback link on the CAF Connection website. And your feedback can be anon anonymous. You don't have to put a name to it. Julie will make sure all the links are available in the chat. But specifically for the VFP forum, we would like to hear from you. It's a great way for you to connect with the community partners. All of the work that the VFPC coordinators have been uh, doing over the past several months to put this together is going to be really great, impactful, and an opportunity for families to engage with these partners. So it's a great way for you to tell us um, how we can better support you through this transition, because it is a huge transition. So we are waiting to hear from you and hope to see you all tomorrow. I know that when I get to a form sometimes on a, on a website, it's a little frustrating because you don't know where this is going to go or if you're going to get anything back. Uh, for those of you who are concerned, if you fill out the feedback form on CAF Connection, uh, that information is emailed directly to Claudia. So she does get that directly if you're concerned about a lot of people reading it, if you're concerned about confidentiality, uh, rest assured that goes directly to Claudia. And she, if you leave her your telephone number or your email address, she will get back to you um, and let you know what was done with that feedback because it is used. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you both for uh, being available to talk about this forum. I think it's a really important workshop. Um, even if you are not officially in the process, but you think that that might be coming soon, um, it's never too early to start doing your research and to start getting that information. So if you think this is something that is in your future, um, please feel free to join us, talk to Louise, register for the forum, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Thank you.